we have many family members uh, who are coming into town. And so uh, we just want you to know, and I'm not just saying this, this is not just pastor speak. Uh, I'm not paid to say this. I, I actually desire and want to say this. Uh, it is an honor and a grace uh, for us to be here uh, tonight in this place to celebrate uh, the biggest miracle of all time. Uh, I'm a little bit off. Uh, I'm really off during this time uh, of the year. Um, and so uh, one of the big memories, obviously, of Christmas uh, is lights. And uh, growing up, we had lots of lights. Um, in fact, whenever I think of Christmas and I think of lights, I wish I could tell you that I, I think very, very spiritual things, but I actually think of growing up in a very, very small church, and we had a, uh, we would do a Christmas play uh, every year, and the first time I think of lights associated with Christmas, I think of uh, Lindell Tucker. Uh, really, nobody knows Lindell Tucker, and that's okay. Let me tell you about Lindell. Every church has a Lindell Tucker uh, because every church has that person that has that next gadget, that has the new thing coming out, and they have it in their possession. And I remember in 1980, 1981, I'm not going to go any further than that, uh, here we are having this little Christmas play. And Lindell was the first guy that had the camera, the video camera, that you put something called a VHS tape <laughs> into uh, the camera. Uh, well, uh, just like all things, when they first come out, they're not the best quality in the world. And so those first portable cameras that you would put on your shoulders, uh, where you would video, uh, you had to have lots of light in order to capture the image. And so this video came with this honkin', uh, that's the brand name, honkin', uh, light <laughs> that was right on top uh, of the camera. And so we realized after this first year, we really didn't need a cardboard uh, with glitter of, for the North Star. We had Linville's light. That's all of us. And so not only could would he film our Christmas play, he gave everybody tans at the same time. And so uh, that's what I think of when I think of light. Um, the other thing I think of is at the beginning of this month, um, I said to Ange, I said, you know, we need an overhaul on our lighting system. Um, and so that's such a guy to say lighting system. And so we went ahead and, and got our Christmas tree uh, for us. This was a big deal because we got our Christmas tree the first week of December. And that's, that's way fast for us. And please pray for our Christmas tree because it's, it's dead. And so <laughs> it's, it's raining blades right now. Like you just walk through our living room and it's shh. It's a little sound effect, you know. That we, thank you for laughing at that. And so, um, so I, and I said, Hans, I, I want to get... And I don't know why, where I got this desire. I said, I want to get those lights that when they get warm, they bubble inside. And so, uh, and so on a Saturday, uh, we went to Target and we went to Walmart. And, and the whole day was his expedition for these lights. And so I was very frustrated. And finally, we, we, we stopped at Lowe's. This is a grand commercial for Lowe's. And, and so, and, and there was this moment where we're walking through things that we're getting ready to give up. We're like, okay, well, I guess we're not supposed to get those lights. And, and, and Ann says, honey, there they are. And, and it was that hallmark moment. It was that moment that just kind of froze and everything goes in slow motion. And there those bubbly, watery lights are, are hanging on the shelf. And it has all this kind of light going on around it. And this angel pointing, well, this, these are it. And, and everything's, you know, it was just it was such, such a... A beautiful, beautiful moment. And, and it's interesting, all the energy, all the energy that was poured into artificial light that was going to go on a dead tree. Well, tonight, what we're celebrating is God the Father, 2,000 years ago, having a light that he will eventually Put on a tree. And that light on that tree produces light. At the very beginning of his ministry, um, Matthew in his gospel says this about the ministry of Jesus. He says, The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. And for those dwelling in the region, the shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. So tonight we're talking about that great light. 
Uh, in John 8, 12, uh, when, when Jesus talks about his own ministry, this is what he says. I am the light of the world. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Two things we just want to simply get across tonight is, first of all, we unabashedly say here that Jesus is the light of the world. When the gospel says he's the light of the world, that means that the need for Jesus is universal. The greatest need in uh, some obscure tribe in Africa, some, uh, the greatest need of somebody who is working in Fifth Avenue in New York, uh, the greatest need of a farmer plowing his or her field, uh, the greatest need of the body of Christ is nothing more and nothing less than Jesus Christ. He's the light of the world. But not only that, he is the light of life. Um, one of the biggest struggles during this season is not treating Jesus as a lesser gift. I, to this day, I've known the Lord since 1987, and uh, there I go through moments, not just through this season, where I basically treat Jesus as lesser than sometimes many other things in my life. And he says, I am the light of life. The problem is, we can kind of redefine what that light is. In fact, I just kind of want to walk through, these are kind of deficient ways that we can look at Jesus as a light. For instance, there are many people, and maybe some of you are here tonight, maybe you believe this, is that they can look at Jesus as a light of good wisdom. In, in other words, uh, the basic value of Christ is that he is a person that is uh, able to give us good lesson plans for life. In other words, he's a grand teacher, and nobody has ever taught like the person of Jesus Christ. The problem is, that locates the main human problem is that we have a lack of knowledge, right? That's a deficient view of the light of Jesus. Some people believe that Jesus is the light of what I call virtuous morality. In fact, I don't know if you've ever seen those book of quotations, The Moral Compass by William Bennett. And you'll get, go through all these books of quotations about things about good morality. And I promise you, there probably will be a quote or quotes from Jesus Christ. And so what that says is that the value of Jesus is that he is a good moral model for us to follow. You see, the problem is, it basically says that the basic human problem is, is simply our bad behavior. Well, some people believe that Jesus is the light of exemplary leadership. That our basic problem, the, the basic diagnosis of the human dilemma is that we just have bad leadership. And so therefore, we want to put our hope in systems, in programs, in um, people in government, and in laws. And so therefore, that's the basic problem, is our lack of direction. But what does Jesus say? I am the light of life. And what that means is, the basic problem is we need to be rescued and given a life. That is the basic human problem. Here's the good news about Christmas. The joy of Christmas is that God has provided in Christ the deepest solution to our deepest problem. And so, there are some of you tonight that you don't have life because you don't have Christ. Um, followers of Jesus, I want to speak first to you. If you're a follower of Jesus tonight, and maybe you're experiencing sweet fellowship with him, and you're not perfect, but you're, you're following hard after him. Let's use this season as just one other um, kind of emphasis in our life to grow more and more like Jesus. And we want to cherish him more. More. We want to commune with him more. We want to talk to him more. We want to talk about him more and more and more. We don't want to get over Christ. And so praise the Lord. But maybe there's some of you that you have professed Christ. 
Maybe you've gotten baptized. At one point, you knew the joy of what it me means to follow him. But you have found yourself doing what I call flirting with the shadows. Flirting toward people who don't know him and don't value him. Flirting toward a thought life that you thought was over, but it's starting to creep back in because you're not restraining your thoughts. And flirting toward even behavior that you thought, I would never do that again. In fact, this room is loaded with people who this past year said all kinds of promises to the Lord. And this room is filled with all kinds of people who broke those promises. And I just want to encourage those of you who are in that camp, let's not forget 1 John. When 1 John says that if we confess our sin, that God is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so therefore, use the beautiful grace of repentance and say, Lord, help me not to flirt with the shadows in my life. And then lastly, we also know on an occasion like this that there are many here who don't have a relationship with God. You know facts about him. You know verses. You know the name. But you don't know him. Our prayer for you is that you would surrender your life to Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Well, first of all, it means this, that you comprehend that Jesus is actually Lord. Remember, folks, uh, when Jesus says he is Lord, that's not a name, that's a title. That you acknowledge that, that Jesus is Lord, that no one can get to the Father except through him and no other way. You understand and believe that you are separated from him. If we don't believe that, there's no use in celebrating Christmas. That's why God came in the person of Jesus Christ. And so you also believe that he lived the life that you and I designed to live, but we can't because of sin. And yet, 30, 33 years after he was born, there he goes, that light up on a tree to take our sin upon him. And then he was buried. And you need to know, if he was just a guy with a lot of wisdom, if he was just a guy with a lot of great morality, if he was just a guy with exemplary leadership, I'm telling you, we are so wrong being here. There's no use being here. But he was God. And he rose again from the grave. So that we could be rescued. Um, as I end, um, I, I have to admit, there are times during the season I get a little bit what I call scroogey. Uh, I sometimes get a little bit judgmental. And probably one of the uh, the types of people that I could struggle with judgmentalism is when people don't pack their lights when it's over. <laughs> so some of you are here. <laughs> Sorry. There's other great churches. And so <laughs> I blew that. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> but I'm not the only one. There was a pastor uh, in Louisville, Kentucky by the name of Bob Russell. He's a longtime pastor of Southeast Christian. He felt the same way. In fact, he wrote about it one time. This is what he said. About 20 years ago, there was a house near the entrance of our subdivision that kept their Christmas lights burning long after the season was passed. They burned through January, even through the 1st of February. Those outside lights burned every night. Finally, about the middle of February, I became a bit critical, and I said, and I quote, if I were too lazy to take my Christmas lights down, I think I'd at least turn them off at night. <laughs> You can tell this was a long time ago. Then he says, but about the middle of March, there was a sign outside of their house that explained why they left the lights on. It said simply, welcome home, Jimmy. 
we learned that family had a son in Vietnam. And they had un unashamedly left their Christmas lights on in anticipation of his return. Hey, followers of Jesus, our light's always on. Do you know why? Because he is coming back. And he's going to make war again. And he's going to definitively win. And so therefore, the tragedies and the mess-ups and the screw-ups and the broken promises and the tragedies that we've even heard through the news today will be done. Will be over because of this Christ. Our prayer for you tonight, if you don't have a relationship with Christ, talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. One more time saying, I want this Christ. I want him. 